All right, so I need to keep these short and sweet. So the last one I made was a little too long, so here we go. All right, so section 13.5 has to do with this idea of a reaction quotient, so Q. And you're going to compare it to K. So let's go over the differences. Q is initial concentration, and K is at equilibrium. So if Q is greater than K, that means this is the bigger side. So reactants are favored, and the reaction is more likely to stay to the left or go in reverse. Okay. If Q is equal to K, then that means you're at equilibrium. And you're pretty much done. It's going to stay where it is. And then if Q ends up being less than K, that means K is greater. And that means the products are favored. Or forward is favored. Okay, and then you can calculate them the same way. So the way you calculate K and Q is identical. So you don't have to memorize a new way of doing that. All right, and so I'm going to go over number 25, and that in that case they gave you K and Q, so basically you're just going to compare them, and I'm only going to do A because it's pretty straightforward. So if you look at Q, they say that's 11.85, and then if you look at K, the problem says it's 5.67, and in this case Q is greater than, which means this side is bigger which means that this is going to go in reverse or it would favor reactants at this point. So therefore, the left is favored. Then the next problem I'm going to do is number 27. 27, in this case, you're asked to calculate Q. So read the problem. You can pause it here and go to number 27. So we know that Q is the initial concentration. In the problem, we're told that P uh, NO2 for every um, two of those we make, we have destroyed, uh, based on the balanced equation, one of the N2O4s. So we, you got to remember to square this. That's probably the biggest mistake that most uh, students make, is they forget to square things. So in the problem, they tell us that the initial concentration of that is 0.056, and they tell us that the initial concentration of this is 0.408. And so if you do the math really quickly, uh, you would get the following. So if you need to pause, you can. But I got 0 0.065 when I did this. And then I compared that to the K, which was given in the problem. So the K, remember this is Q, and what is K is 0.133. And we notice that Q is less than K, which means for this equation the products will be favored and it's probably likely to go forward. All right, let's do a harder problem. The last one I'm going to do is number 29. So if you look at number 29, let me get my paper in front of me, you will see that K is very, very large. Okay, it's 2.4 times 10 to the third. All right, so very large, large K. We know that the products are probably favored. So it asked us to calculate the concentration. And so we're going to go back and do that. So in this case, Q isn't really part of what you're asked to do. But you do need to make a few assumptions. And so we're going to introduce this idea of a table. And I stands for initial concentration of everybody. So I'm going to fill out this table. I know that there are two NOs. Let me make that look like a two. Uh, 
and that when they react, I'm going to get nitrogen and oxygen, those two. Initially, I have 6.78 times 10 to the negative third molarity. Okay, and I got that by taking the grams that were given and dividing it by the volume. So if you quickly go back, you take your 0.61 grams. I know that every time I have 30.01 grams, I have one mole. So that's going to give me my moles. And then uh, when I did that, I found that there were point. 0203 moles. Now molarity is moles per liter, so I divided it by the 3 liters. So if you do that math, you'll get the equation, you'll get that number. I'm going to erase that because I don't really want that arrow there. All right, so that's how I got that number. And we're going to assume that there are zero products at this point. So we're going to plug in X for that and X for that. Now, for every one nitrogen, one oxygen is going to be made, so the answer is going to be the same for both. Now, this is the tricky bit. Oops, I put that in the wrong spot. Excuse me. All right, so we're going to assume we have zero. Now, as the reaction occurs, we're going to make X of that, so we will make X of that. And at the same time, for every one nitrogen that is made, we're going to destroy two nitrogen monoxides. So the equilibrium concentration of these is going to be X and X and 6.78 times 10 to the negative third minus 2X. So don't forget to do the minus 2 thirds. I mean 2X. So I'm going to put that in parentheses there. And now I'm going to set up the K equilibrium. So I know that I have 2,400 because 2.4 times 10 to the negative third is 2,400. And I know the concentration of the nitrogen is X and the concentration of the oxygen is X. And I know that this is 6.78 times 10 to the negative third minus 2X. Don't forget that. All right, now this is going to become an algebra problem really, really quickly because I can combine these two. So I'm going to get 2400 equals x squared, and this is, um, by the way, this is also squared, almost forgot that part, uh, 6.78 times 10 to the negative third minus 2x squared. Because remember, there are two of these in the equation, so I need to square that when I make the k. And now, how do you get rid of squares? Well, you square root everybody, but you're an equal opportunity annoyer, so I'm going to square root both sides, and I'm going to end up with 2,400 equals x, because I can pull that out of the square root, and I can pull out the 6.78 times 10 to the negative third minus 2x. Voila, now I'm going to solve that by bringing this portion over to the other side. So I would pause right now and do the math. All right, so I took that and I moved it to the other side and now I'm going to distribute. So I want you to pause for a minute and distribute and see what you get. I'm trying to keep this video under 11 minutes because my last one was too long and YouTube wouldn't load it. All right, when I multiplied that out, I got 3.322 times 10 to the negative 1 minus 98.0x equals x. And so if you bring this to this side, you basically end up with equals 99.0x. So now we're going to divide both sides by 99.0 and we're going to solve for x because that's going to cancel out. And lo and behold, x equals basically 3 point here's my point 3 six times 10 to the negative third molarity and that's going to be your concentration of your n2 and your o2 in the new mixture and then you're also asked for the n2 concentration so that's when you're going to go back 
and do this one last step. And then I'm going to stop because I've done those examples. So I'm going to take my original, which was 6.78 times 10 to the negative third minus 2x. Remember, that's our concentration of the uh, nitrogen monoxide, but there are two in the equation, which is why it's 2x. So that's our NO. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get 6.78 times 10 to the negative third minus 2 times the 3.36 3 times 10 to the negative third. And so when I times that out, 2 times 3.36, to the negative third, I get that I'm going to subtract uh, 6.72 times 10 to the negative third from the original amount. So I'm going to replace this with that. Okay, so I'm going to do that math, and when I do that, I'm going to get. A really small number. So basically I get that the nitrogen concentration at equilibrium is uh, 6.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now depending on how molarity. So depending on how many sig figs you used. And then the O2 is equal to the N2 and that's equal to our other amount which was the um, 3.36 times 10 to the negative third molarity, and all of this is at equilibrium. So I hope you find this lecture helpful, and um, do your homework, and email me if you have any problems.